All right, I'm Avi and welcome to part eight in our series on creating our first Django application. Now we left off where we got our cookie cutter template working, we had our header, our footer, and then we also got the detailed view to work. Now it's time to create a form that enables the user to vote and then also a results page where the user can see the results of his or her vote. Now, before we do that, there's one thing we have to change, and that's our URL in our index.html file. Right now, it's hard coded, and we're doing slash poll slash the question ID. What if, you know, you had a more complex URL, slash polls, slash user ID, slash question ID, slash text or something, who knows? But in those cases, there'd be a lot of copy and pasting. You would have to know the previous URLs in order to create your URL and so on. That's why there's a simpler way to do this using the URL tag and it's more SEO friendly. So go ahead and say a href and then in curly braces percent, we're gonna use the URL tag to output URLs in our application that match the global name of our view. So since we're going to the detailed view, it's gonna be URL detail and then what are we passing in or what's the next slash? It's gonna be the question ID. So question.id and then go ahead and put the percent sign. So all this does is it maps our URL to whatever it was before and then the question ID after that. It's that simple. Now there's one more change we have to make and that's called namespacing. What if we had multiple apps? Right now we only have one, but we had a polls app, we had a blog app, we had several apps and in each app we had a detail template. If that was the case, then you'd have issues, there'd be errors, and that's why it's always good to namespace. So go ahead and head over to your urls.py in your my site folder. And inside of this, after you include your polls.urls, do a comma and set the namespace equal to polls, okay? That's all you have to do. And once you've done this, you need to reference your polls app inside of your URL. So head over to your index.html and inside of this, we're gonna say polls detail, okay? So all this does is it's referencing that the detailed view of the polls application should be the URL. If you were doing the blog application, it would be blog colon detail. Anyways, fantastic job. Let's go ahead and run this, refresh, everything works. What's your age? It still works, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, the next step is to work on our form. Head over to your detail.html and inside of this, add the following code. Once we've shown the question text, if there's an error message, we wanna display that. So go ahead and say percent if error message, a very simple if statement, we want to display the error. So paragraph, let's make it bolded. And then inside of this, it's going to be error message. Go ahead and close the if statement, percent, end if, percent, fantastic. All right, so the next thing is to add a form into our web page. Go ahead and say form action is equal to, it's gonna be a post method. So basically, once the form has been submitted, we wanna perform an action that sends the question ID into the view, um, into the vote view. So go ahead and say action, and then in curly braces, percent signs, we're gonna say URL polls colon vote. So this is again using what we learned. And then we're gonna pass question dot ID. And then go ahead and say the method is equal to post. Okay, that's the form. Now inside the form, we wanna display a radio button and then the choices. Okay, so we're gonna use a for loop for this. Um, and before that, we need to add a CSRF token. Basically, before any post form or inside of any post form um, to make sure that data is in stolen or since you're modifying data, you need to pass a CSRF token, okay? After that, let's go ahead and do a for loop to get the choices. For choice in question dot choice set dot all, okay? All right, so we're gonna need a button and a label. Now, we can use buttons by, use, we can create buttons by using the input tag. Type is gonna be equal to radio, and radio is a circular buttons that you might have seen in a form. 
go ahead and give it a name choice and ID should be choice and then in two curly braces for loop dot counter and the two curly braces and value is equal to and whoops choice dot ID so what the for loop dot counter does is it basically returns the counter of the for loop if I'm on the second iteration, it's going to return two, third iteration, it's going to return three, and so on. Now, once we have our button, the next thing is to return a label. Go ahead and end the input tag and create a label. Now, for the label, we also want to get what choice should it display, right? So for choice, um, choice for loop dot counter, okay, um, go ahead and close that. We're going to say choice dot choice text awesome now one last thing is let's go ahead and add a space a break tag after the label now we can close the for loop percent and four percent and then we can create a submit button so once the user is done with the form he needs to submit so that's going to be input type is equal to submit and then we're gonna give it a value which is equal to vote. All right, that's it for the form. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever on what HTML we're using or if something doesn't make sense, definitely post a question down below and I'll get back to you. Now, the next step is to actually write the Python logic for this form. Right now, if we save and go to Chrome and refresh, we see 15, 16, 17, or actually, you know what? Let's get back to our main page. What's your age? we see 15, 16, 17, and vote. So that works, except we're not saving any data. We're not showing the vote value. Um, if you saw right there, it's showing double. And the reason for that is because of this over here. So let's go ahead and delete that, refresh. And now we see what's your age, our three options, and then the vote button. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and head over to our views.py file and modify the vote function as well as the results function. All right, we can go ahead and delete the return HTTP response. The next thing is to get our question there. Question is equal to get object or 404 question comma PK is equal to question I underscore ID. Okay. Now we need to make sure that the question variable exists using a try or accept. And if it doesn't exist, we'll pass the error message back to pull slash detail the HTML saying you didn't select a choice. So try selected choice is equal to question dot choice underscore set dot get. And then I'm going to say PK is equal to request dot post. And we're going to pass in choice. Basically request dot post returns a dictionary like object that lets you access submitted data by a key name. In this case, we're using choice. Request.post choice is going to return us the ID, which is exactly what PK takes. Now, if selected choice exists, that's fantastic. Otherwise, we want to tell the user to select a choice. So go ahead and say return render. We're going to pass in request, comma, poll slash detail.html. And then for our context, we're going to go ahead and say question is going to be our question variable. And we're going to have our error message. So comma error message be our, it's going to be a simple string that says, please select a choice. Okay. Now, once we've checked this try and accept case, let's go ahead and use an else statement. So else if this works, if try works, we want to increase the selected choice dot votes by one, right? If I selected a name, I want to increase that number of votes by one. So we're going to say selected choice dot votes plus or equal to one. And then we're going to save it. So selected underscore choice dot save. All right. Once we save the user's choice, the next step is to take him to the results page. We can do that by saying return HTTP response redirect, and then I'm going to pass in reverse 
Cole's results. So we're passing him to the results page and we're gonna pass in ARGS args equal to question dot ID. So before I explain what all of this is, we need to import HTTP response redirect up top. So from Django.http, import HTTP response, comma, HTTP response redirect. And then we also have to import reverse. So from Django dot core dot URL resolvers, we're going to import reverse. Basically what this last line of code does is it allows us to not have a hard coded URL. Okay. We're telling them to go to the results page and we're passing in question dot ID. All right. Now it's not the reverse function again, takes in two parameters, what your destination is in our case, polls results. And what are we passing the question dot ID? Awesome. So now that we have our vote function working, let's go ahead and modify our results page. So in results, all we have to do now is get question is equal to get object or 404 question comma PK is equal to question ID. Okay. And then we're going to render our template. So return render request comma polls slash results on HTML comma question should be, I'm sorry, I forgot the quotation marks question should be our question variable. Awesome. Right click on your pulse directory, hit new HTML file and call this results.html. Go ahead and copy the following code from index, the extends and the block, just like we've done before. So delete all of this command V and then go ahead and add the end block code and block. All right. So when the results are HTML, we want to display two things. We want to display the question and then we also want to display the choices and the number of votes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is from index. I'm sorry, from detail at HTML, I'm going to copy our line that gives us the question text. Command C, Command V. Once we have the question text, I'm going to use an unordered list to display the choices and the results. Go ahead and copy the following code. UL using a for loop for choice in question dot choice set dot all. Okay. We want to display the choice text, right? We want to show the user what the choices were. And then we also want to display the number of votes. So we have our choice text, um, go ahead and add maybe two dashes. And then we want to display the choice of votes. So choice votes is again, another variable we had. And then we also want to pass in, um, a neat parameter vote choice dot votes pluralize. Okay. And this all right. And once we have this, let's go ahead and end our for loop percent. And then let's go ahead and end our unordered list. And then last but not least, we want to give the user an option of vote again. So go ahead and say a href is equal to, and again, using our percent URL parameter polls, Details. We want to take him to the detailed view. And then we also want to pass in the question dot ID. Okay. That's the href. We want to ask him vote again. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and test this build out. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was in your views.py file, make sure you have a comma after your question dot ID in your args. Okay. That's important. Otherwise you'll get an error. Head back over here. What's your name? Let's say my Bob name is Bob. I vote. You now see Bob has one vote. Rachel has zero votes and Fred has zero votes. Um, if you're wondering what the pluralize function does, basically it pluralizes it. Otherwise though, fantastic job. We're almost done with our entire polls application. We might have to add some CSS, maybe add some bootstrap, but this is fantastic. 
Fred, vote again. We all have one vote. You can test out the other question as well. 15, 17, 15 has two votes, 17 has one vote. Awesome job, guys. All right, that's it from my side. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more awesome programming videos. And I'll see you in the next lecture.